Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Here I am trying to make sense of the crazy Arizona market. Thought I'd give you a recap of what went on in our market this week. Not that real estate changes week over week, but sometimes you see some things that make you shake your head. The first one I saw was the impact on real estate mortgage rates. 6.44 went down from about 6.54. Not a big move, but what was interesting to me was the revisions in the job data came out that were shocking. Highest revision in 15 years. They said, oh, you know what, after looking at all the numbers and checking and cross-checking and checking our estimates, we were off by about 800,000 jobs. Now, why does that matter? Well, normally the bond market reacts wildly to that. Bad news is good news for mortgage rates, right? So if the GDP came in at a negative number, the bond market would just go nuts and mortgage rates will plummet because that's usually what happens in a recession. And But there is this uh, well-telegraphed anticipation of a rate cut by the central bank coming in September. The bond market is under, operating under the assumption it'll be at least a half a point cut. So here comes this bad news, and they're kind of like, yeah, well, that's what we thought, um, so whatever. The bad news didn't shake up the market. It makes you question, say, are they a little ahead of their skis? Because if in September, if the central bank ha happens to come in and go, we're going to go 0.25, I think you're going to see mortgage rates go up because there's this anticipation that they're going to come in hotter. The general feeling by all the surveys out there is that they feel that they're going to have at least three cuts. We're going to have one September, November, and December. And it'll be about 0.75, you know, 25 at a time, but they're going to start out with 0.50. It's a big guessing game. There ought to be money in it for you and me if we guess it right. So so that's why that news that should have been really shocking just kind of go, oh, oh yeah. yeah, almost a million jobs, who cares? Where are we? Well, I'll read you what they say here. We're seeing some more positive signs from a seller's perspective. It's not all bleak out there for you sellers. In nine cities showing a crease, an increase in the Crawford Market Index over the past month, up from eight last week. So they're saying the change is still painfully slow, but it's real. The trend has reversed, but it's yet to gather any significant momentum. So basically, what the Crawford Market Index is saying is, you know, we're not going this way for sellers. We're going this way, but it's moving very, very slowly. And so far, it looks like it's a trend in the direction for sellers. It's not great news if you're a buyer, right? Unless you're in Buckeye, Maricopa, Queen Creek, surprise a good year, then it is. It's already a buyer's market down there. But Fountain Hills, Chandler, Avondale, Scottsdale, Phoenix, Gilbert, parts of Mesa, sellers are not having a problem. And this is validating that as far as the supply and demand on the index. And here's what it looks like in a line here. You can see it's hit the bottom. It's just Stay in there. What you look for is things like this, going way down or turning and going up. It's a forward-leaning indicator of supply and demand. And our active listings are kind of showing that the same way here. We really haven't budged all summer. I thought we'd start trending down, but we're not. In fact, my new listings that I track were getting about 150 more new listings per week than contracts. That's the only thing that's keeping active listings up. Because our contracts are down to about 2,400 every seven days, which we were about 2,200. Um, we're seeing mortgage applications go up this week because of the cut in rates, but I don't see it hitting the numbers yet in pending sales. This is listings under a million dollars on the actual asking price, and it has not moved. It's flat. It's been this way all year. But what we are seeing move is seller contributions. They're contributing more. So basically what they're saying is, well, I'm going to keep my price, but I'm going to help you with your closing costs or perhaps a rate buy down. And you can see here that that number has spiked up this last week, up to 54%. That's the highest it's been in a long time. I mean, take a look at that. Back here in 2014, it was 32%. Half of the homes out there are offering seller concessions. That's why the prices stand where they're at, their asking price. Give me my asking price, I'll kick in 10K. And you can see right there, 
Seller concession is 54%. Median concession, $10,000. That explains why prices are sticky, but negotiations are not sticky. Add to that the fact that now, with the new NAR ruling, negotiations on commissions are all over the place. So the buyer can negotiate with the agent and go, well, what do you charge? And the agent says, well, I charge this. For when we write a contract, let's get it from the seller. There's a brokerage in California that had seven listings. All seven of them said, nope, we're not offering any compensation, but we're willing to negotiate. Every contract came in that said they wanted contribution from the seller. The seller said, okay, I'll do that. They got between 2 and 3%. Because they have about 30 35% in equity. What's 2%, right? So the sellers are saying, let's just get the deal done. You're already seeing that they're going to give you $10,000 for closing costs, right? So seller concessions, as far as your buyer agent commission, could be part of that math. And that's what we're starting to see. What we're not seeing, which is rampant, is, well, I should word that differently. What we are seeing that's rampant is confusion, massive confusion. Buyers, please understand you are not required to pay your agent. You can get it from the seller. You can negotiate with your agent the percentage you'll pay him if he helps you. You can also say, I'm not using you. You are not required. Sellers, you are not required to pay. But it's part of the negotiation process to get the deal done. It just hasn't been as transparent as it should have been, hence the lawsuits. Now, months of supply went up from 2.8% to two to three point oh, not an alarming number. If this were to keep climbing up, we would see that in the Crawford Market Index first. We would see that in new listings first. We would see that in a huge downward dip in closed contracts, not closed but pending contracts. We're not seeing any of that. So this is just a minor little dip up, and so. Those are the numbers we want to watch for that will affect months of supply. And months of supply is a lagging indicator. So these were contracts that were written 30 to 45 days ago. Number of price changes per week kind of goes in what we saw with the first chart where people are kind of staying level. But uh, if I move my ugly mug here, you can see that they actually went down. So people are not out there dropping their prices right now. But wait, I thought when all this commission thing changes that buyers would get a better price on a house. I don't see that coming to fruition, and I haven't seen any of that movement yet, but we're still shaking through all this stuff. I'm waiting for the news stories to finally start getting things right. And all week, they were saying all these changes are going into effect August 17th, and they were correct, but we did it here August 1st. So we were ahead of the curve trying to work out all the kinks ahead of time. So that's where our market is for the Phoenix market area. If you have any questions, shoot me an email at rick at rickhelps.com. Take care.